Hi there, Sarah. Hello. Lovely to see you. Lovely. For people who don't know you, I just wonder if you're going to introduce yourself to... I'm Sarah Warsop. I was jeweller jeweler in residence here at the British Library from September to March 2013. Which is fascinating because you're also... I'm also a dancer, a dancer. and choreographer. Yeah, yes. and choreographer. Now, they are two really cool and very, very different creative realms, aren't they? Yeah. And I kind of wanted to chat to you a little bit about, I guess, being a creative yeah. and your experiences as a creative in residence here, and your experience personally, your experience with other kind of creatives, your observations, and I'm kind of fascinated about this as a, as a coach who works with people as creatives, and also as a creative myself, I'm really passionate about creatives perhaps using their creativity and just allowing themselves to move ahead in their careers and in their art in a way that's meaningful for them. So tell me a little bit about your, your own journey. How did you get involved in creativity? Which thing came first? Was it making or was it dancing? Dance came first. I was doing my A-levels at school, like you do, and didn't have a clue what to do with myself. Right. And stumbled almost literally into dance school. <laughs> I like that. I'm loving the metaphor there. I like that. You must be pretty talented to be able to stumble. It must be a pretty cool way of stumbling into dance school. Yeah. I, I think the careers officer at school handed me a prospectus because I'd always done the school show. And mm. Anyway, I did end up at the Laban Centre. Right. And, is that, and I don't know much about dancers. Laban, what, what particular types of dance is that? Contemporary. Contemporary. Yeah. yeah. And ended up there for four years and fell in love with dance and choreography. Mm. Uh, freelanced for a while, then was... Um, lucky enough, I guess, to go to Roma Dance Company for six years. Mm -hmm. And then um, went to Siobhan Davis Dance Company, which is a smaller, more... Um, she expects a lot of creative input from her dancers, okay. so you're not just a, a moving body mm -hmm. being directed, you're okay. expected to really input on the on the vision. Mm. And I would imagine, well, one of the things I always get a sense of from even how you're talking about that, I guess dance as a creative field requires so much skill, so much discipline, um, and I would imagine that dance is quite competitive, I guess as all creative fields are, but you get that sense when it comes to contemporary, when it comes to balance, and things, types of dance, you do get that sense that there's a lot of discipline required, um, and that generally speaking, that a dancer, I guess particularly um, even more than some other creative fields, is going to have a relatively short span in terms of a, a traditional career unless they're able yeah. to do other things around that. Is that it? So were you aware of all those kind of pressures? The discipline is definitely there. I think for me, the discipline fed into being able to be self-driven as far as making work was concerned, mm -hmm. rather than going to lots of auditions and driving right. the discipline that way. Right, and because, so is that where the choreography yeah. bit came in? So you... You were very aware, but the choreography gave you a, a, an opportunity for you to set the agenda, I guess. Yes, not. and also I think with any creative practice, it it doesn't just turn up. The create, You don't wake up and go, it's day after day, mm. like writing. Mm. You can't just expect that one day you're going to sit down and it's just going to go mm. there onto the page. Mm. It's like every day at a certain time you sit down. Mm. And even if you get a sentence mm. done. But this, this is what I find fascinating, you see, because I think that I'm a bit unusual when it comes to some creatives, that I'm a bit um, intuitive. So I find that there's a discipline and there's craft that emerges over time. But I find that particularly as a, um, a, as a singer, first and for, and, I, and the singing arrived quite late, that um, it would it's quite an intuitive thing. And funny enough, there was a brief period of time where um, a good friend of mine who was a singer had, a, um, had got a group of dancers and I love dance but I've never done any choreographed dance and so I found the discipline of trying to learn a routine was like a really difficult so I, the, I've always found that with creativity it's a very intuitive thing and so when I funny enough when I got to write the last book was the first time that I had to write something that was quite um, that had more structure than anything else I had before so that was really interesting there the, the discipline required, and I've always been fascinated by I mean, um, the blend between technique and complete freedom of expression. That's really fascinated me, and I love those singers, and I think there are quite few who I can think of who I think have that blend, where they that technical mastery, and yet there's just this 
freedom. So I really admire those people who technically have you know that discipline because it's not because it's not me. And and I've worked a lot on I guess mm -hmm. lots of technical things over time. And so it's really fascinating as you talk about then that you know that discipline to. But I think I I think discipline is there. The technique is there to 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 work on to to keep ploughing away at mm. because when it comes to creativity what you want to do is just put that aside mm. put it away mm. so then you're free mm, that's right so you have this backup of, right. of things to draw on so or true. decide not to draw on mm. and the more knowledge that you gather the more skills you acquire mm. in a way you've got more stuff to dump yeah. when it comes to being yeah. in that moment of creativity yeah. yeah but I guess I mean I'm wondering how did you find that whole journey you know you um so you talked about being at school then this thing about the the, the dance and you, you you know that and, and the, the teachers pointed you toward that you had always been in shows and so on then you found yourself going to several dance schools and presumably performing and all of the rest of that how did you find because i guess we all of our journeys as creatives vary some of us have quite smooth journeys and all that some of us are wrestling with the work with the environment we're discovering ourselves and all the rest of it how did you find that whole period of time, years and years, performing, choreographing? How 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 are you finding it? I think going to dance school was quite difficult for me, mm -hmm. but I think that was to do with being in um, an institution. Right. I'm not very happy in a big institution, mm -hmm. surrounded by hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's a fault with it. Mm -hmm. I just think it's how I'm mm -hmm. made up. And I think it wasn't until I got to Siobhan Davis, which was a much smaller company at the time, it was only six, eight dancers. Mm -hmm. And it was like going home right. creatively, yeah. even though I'd never been there before. Yeah. It was like this, I could breathe again. Mm. Because Ron Bear Dance Company was bigger, mm. uh, 16, 20, 25 dancers, whatever. It was. It was it's a big machine. Yeah. And what's the routine like? Just give paint us a picture as of or, or, day as a day to day. Because what kind of stuff are you doing just to, to, to get a bit of a, a flavour of that? Um, um, I suppose generally you would, um, as a company, you would meet up for company class mm -hmm. often. Yeah, um, yeah. Every day. Yeah. It would be an hour and a half or two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would rehearse for the rest of the day. Right. If you're making a new piece, you would be. Um, you would be in the process mm. of creating mm. new material to mm. go into the new piece being right. made. Um, if you're not making a new piece, you'd rehearse the piece that you're probably about to go out and tour right. with. Right. So, so you're talking about six, seven hours of dance or work around dance? Yeah, it depends. Yeah. Uh, I think average, she would do class at around ten-ish, yeah. and then depending on the workload. Sometimes you'd have an easy day where you'd run through a piece and everything would be fine and you'd go home because you'd about to go on tour mm. and then you'd finish you know, four o'clock. Sometimes you'd push on. Some companies go till six. And the touring aspect mm. of that, just to, again to get flavour of that, I mean how often do you be touring and um, uh, one show per day, one show every few, how, how, how give me a, give us a picture of it? Again there's, uh, a, there's a breadth, so a bigger company, and I'm talking about contemporary companies mm. here rather than big ballet mm. machines, <laughs> they're different again, but um, okay, a touring schedule, it could be that you'd be in a town for a week mm -hmm. and um, you do class at midday, you dress until six mm. and then you get ready for the show and then you do the show mm. and then the next day would be the same and sometimes you'd have a matinee on a Saturday. Mm. Wow, um, I mean that's that's fascinating in itself because I think that I remember that um, around the time of when I had started singing and a friend of mine who was I think probably far more disciplined around his singing than, than I was was the first one who really got me to spend even more time um, uh, in terms of my, when my singing teacher got me spending even more, more, drew to my attention about you know mastering that particular craft whereas yeah. in some fields be it somebody's doing opera or somebody's doing some up, up, up dance the kind of the the discipline and so on that is is I guess built in and so it's really interesting I just think um, 
hopefully for anybody who's kind of listening and you're beginning your kind of career and learning, depending on what you're doing, um, the kind of discipline and a bit of that, the journey that's going to be involved in it, isn't it? We, we very often see the finished piece and think, oh my goodness, that person's magnificent, they're magnificently talented, but they might be unaware of all of the, the other stuff that goes to see that, that finished article. That finished article. Um, and just wanting to dance, I guess, yeah. in that kind of environment is, isn't, isn't enough, I would imagine. Is that fair to say? I, I think, again, it's not turning up and imagining that inspiration is going to start striking the yeah. moment. It's yes. day after day, yeah. and certainly with the time-based art, singing, mm. dance, mm. whatever, there's, a, there's collaboration. Mm. And unless you're a solo performer mm. and you, mm. that's all you do, mm. You're turning up, and other people are depending on you, and it's a, it's a group mm. activity. And without you, you're letting people down, and it's all that day to day. Just because yeah. you're having a bad day, yeah. you just have to get on with yeah. it because there's this whole yes. thing to create. And actually, it's in those incremental day to day activities that you're creating this amazing, hopefully, mm. product. And did you find during that time? Because I want to move on to talk a little bit about the the jewelry in a, in a moment, but. Did you find um, during that particular kind of time, because you were a dancer and you were a choreographer, how were they the two different things kind of playing out? Were you on a journey where you were more and more wanting to be able to express yourself through being able to choreograph pieces and then making decisions that you wanted to, I don't know, take charge of more of your career or did you explore maybe even running your own company? What, what was going on for you creatively uh, um, during those, those years? When I was um, dancing for somebody else, there was a six-year period where I was also running my own company. Right. Um, How was that? Tell me, tell us a little bit about that because that's one that's fascinating, isn't it? Because this is the bit where, as a creative, suddenly then you're mm. also um, running a business, and this mm. is, I guess, one of the, the, the things that makes us in an interesting space here at the British Library because suddenly you're not just dancing or choreographing, you've then got this entity that you've got to run. So tell us a little bit about, about that. I certainly didn't want to do it alone, mm. so I tied up, I, I collaborated with a friend of mine mm. who made very different contrasting work to me. Mm. And we... We made kind of at the same time, we used to split our days so that we'd be creating, choreographing in the morning and then we'd be dancing for mm. each other. Mm. We'd switch, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. Um, another friend of mine helped us manage it okay. and um, go for funding and right. all of that, yeah. set up touring. It was fun, it was arduous, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. um, it certainly pushed us into places that we wouldn't have gone otherwise. Mm. It made us grow up, mm. it made us see the problems involved. Because mm. I guess that very often then we see the business side yeah. for the first time. I certainly know from my own experience as a singer, I was so busy, you know, um, I knew I needed to know some stuff around the business, but to be honest with you, I never, when I was pursuing it, really learned, I know far more about the the industry or the creative industries obviously now as a kind of coach and so I'd imagine that experience must have just given such a roundedness of a, a perspective you're having to market, promote, uh, how we're going to bring in audiences here, all the stuff you're talking about, the funding kind of stuff that, that very often I guess as, as creatives we're often cocooned or we're so caught up in maybe our ego, I said it's caught up in my ego as a performer, I'm doing this, this, this mm -hmm. and this, that unaware or oblivious of stuff to do mm -hmm. with the business that you pretty much really should know in a way. I mean, mm -hmm. was that, so it, was, it sounded like it was suddenly a, quite a huge learning curve. It was. I think it, it began to form in my mind what it was that I wanted as a creative, mm. or rather what it was I could leave behind and what it was I wanted Oh, now we're talking. Keep. I want to talk to you about that then. then. Tell us a little bit about that, that because that, I mean, you've, you've then brought us to something I guess is a really important point for us as creatives to at least consider. You know, what is it that we're wanting to create? What is it that we're wanting to do? And I know from our, we, and we've only spoken a couple of times, mm. but I get this sense and I love the way that, even the way you talked about it, there was a lovely energy to that. 
what is it we're wanting to create? What is it we're wanting to 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 leave? Mm. What 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 is that about um, to you? And I've got a feeling that this we'll soon have to mention the jewelry because mm. jewelry. What strikes me about jewelry, you've suddenly got something that can be just so stunning and beautiful that makes a mark, and it's it's there's something that we know it, it, it can it can last, isn't it? There's something about that, and you know, you can look at, and especially if you look at certain historic pieces of jewellery, <laughs> generation and generation and generation, something's passed down. So there, you do have an example of a piece of work that that has life, it has legacy. Yeah. So tell me about this for you as a creator. What, what, when you when you said you begin to explore this thing about what is you wanting to leave, what is that about for you? Because I'm fascinated. I think there's something quite personal about being a dancer, because although you can dance your entire life, mm -hmm. um, depending on what your body's been through mm. and what you want, mm. sometimes it's just not appropriate. Mm. <laughs> you, at some point you have to start thinking about what's next, mm. and I literally made a list, mm. wrote down the things that were the most important. Mm. I wanted to be creative for my whole life. Mm. I wanted to make stuff. Mm. I wanted to be um, self-sufficient. Right. Yeah. That was really important to me. Dance is quite unwieldy. Yeah. <laughs> you need a big space. It right. needs to be heated. There's the, you need sprung floors yeah. if you can. Otherwise, it impacts right. on your bones. Right. Yes. Um, you need other people. You need to to. Get in a space with other people, probably. Some people do it alone. Mm. And then you need to find quite big spaces to sell mm. what you've done. Mm. And I felt the desire to be a little bit more yeah. intimate, I yeah. suppose. And it's lovely because I'd imagine that... And I was curious, and I was, I think, just before, um, I think maybe even yesterday, I was thinking a little bit about us having this kind of chat, and I thought... Oh, it's interesting, you know, you've got the dance and the, and the dream making, and now I can, I, can, I can completely get it. I really so get it that, you know, you've got this thing about the dance, which is pure expression, and then you've got something, and of course all the things that you talk about that link to it, and then you've got something which is, it can be a fair more personal story, also a personal story about the creator of this, because I guess with, with dance and so on, quite soon there's a dialogue between us and people who are watching about what that piece is about, but... I guess with a piece of jewellery, you can just go off in your own little mm. space and just, mm. oh, I could imagine just go away for however long you want to and, mm. and work on that particular piece. Obviously, we've got bills to pay and all the rest of it, but I guess in terms of that creative process, yeah. it must be very, very, um, I'm sure there's some similarities, but very different. It can be in that far more, an, an inner space where you can yeah. be with that. Yeah. I mean, what makes dance incredible is also the most frustrating aspect, and the same with jewellery. Mm. So with dance, you work for 25 years and everything you've done doesn't exist. Mm. There's nothing. Right. There may be dance on film, there may be... But the mm. thing, it's like you sing a song, it only, it's only alive in the moment mm. of singing. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, you're, it's really interesting what you're saying. And I never really thought about that in terms of... I can Now you mention it in terms of dance, I can see that. I feel as though singing, I kind of feel as though... Uh, I mean, obviously, the, the mediums will change. It'll be interesting how I might feel about it in terms of the mediums that, you know, the outlet mediums, which are changing. But I kind of feel, if I listen back to stuff, mm. I still feel it's, it's live and it's there. But I wonder if also that's partly due in terms of some of the formats mm. that's also been captured on. But as you say about dance, I can completely get it because it, you, you've done it. And then unless it's on piece of film, it, uh, it, it's gone. Unless you've got, I guess, particular memories that... That are linked to that a particular kind of performance, whatever it's gone, and you may not be able to kind of. It's it's yeah. so intangible, mm. and that's the beauty and the frustration. Mm. And of course, with with jewelry, I wanted to wake up in the morning. What I'd been working on the day before was there on the table in front of me. There wasn't this big preparation to do before I got back to this moment. It was right there. Mm. Of course, what you lack is the collaboration and the day-to-day -day, mm. um, muddling through of a problem. Mm. It all goes on in your own. 
Wonderful. You know what I'm going to do there? I'm, I'm really enjoying this conversation so much. This is the, this is the dangerous thing. And if I'm chatting to interesting people, so I think, oh, I'm just going to have this quick five-minute chat. And then particularly the conversation goes all over. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to pause the camera there. I think that maybe when we come back, it will be good to talk a little bit from that, a little bit. I'd love to hear your thoughts um, to people who are wanting to explore or beginning to explore their own creativity. Because it's interesting. You've got this experience of working with others, working with yourself, exploring different, you've gone on this journey of exploring different mediums, talking a little bit about this role that you had at the British Library um, and coming into contact with, I guess, other creatives who are uh, running their own business or being their own boss or wanting that kind of autonomy, whatever words we use to that. Um, and I think that'd be really interesting just to kind of round yeah. stuff up. So I'm going to leave yeah. you to smile and I'll turn off the camera. <laughs>